Um, I did, I did speak to, uh, Rosie's walking back there at the moment, in her hand, she's got, I'll explain later, but we're, we're using uh, a liturgy from Iona today, so if you put your hand up a minute, Rosie's got, so for those of you who can't see it on the screen, um, put your hand up and we'll, uh, and we'll bring to you uh, a paper copy, for those of you who can't see it on the screen, so, hand, hand, <coughs> Hands up, there's one, one down here as well. It'll be on the screen, but for those of you who struggle reading the screen, we've got some paper copies. So I'd hoped to have them ready for when we came in, but as you probably know, we've got a problem today, or we've had a problem this last week. The internet is broken. <gasps> See, some of, you, some of you aren't bothered at all. The internet's not broken, therefore we can't print. <laughs> Everything now relies, relies on the internet. Okay, well, there's, there's one more. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll run off another set in a, in a moment. Okay, all right. I will disappear in the first hymn and run off some more. Okay. <laughs> so not only is the internet broken, that means there's no streaming. Okay, so they will... Uh, Tony's recording. Uh, Ledbury are streaming this morning. And uh, tell your friends who wanted to watch this service uh, that we'll upload a recording later. It is strange how... Uh, we depend on the internet and how easily the internet can be brought down. Uh, so there is now two very large trees between us and the telegraph post um, that feeds St. John's. And squirrels and trees have damaged the cable, hence there's no internet. BT came yesterday to duly try and repair it and could not get their cherry picker anywhere near the tree. Uh, so hopefully this week that will be resolved. Uh, back to Alan and Di Price. I did speak to uh, their son-in-law yesterday, and uh, they're there for the weekend. Um, so um, Di was, at that point, that was about 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Uh, Di and uh, one of our daughters were out having some, some, some time out uh, whilst uh, the son-in-law was Alan sitting? Retail Sorry? Retail therapy. Retail therapy. There we go, John. Thank you. Okay, so let's go on with the service. Uh, opening responses will appear on the screen. And I'll, sorry, uh, hang on, I have this one. So there, if you can't, just in case you can't see it, because it's a bit small. Uh, the response is, we gather in praise of God. With nature in its power and beauty, with rain and wind and sunshine, with the ancient rocks and the budding flower, we gather in praise of God. With believers and seekers the whole world wide, with people in every land and speakers of every language, we gather in praise of God with the angels and saints in heaven, with Columba who built the Iona community, and with all who worship there and in this place, we gather in praise of God. With Jesus who promised his presence and the spirit who showers her blessing, we gather in praise of God. Here let heaven and earth embrace. Here may God's people find home. Amen. So we're going to sing our first hymn, and all of our hymns today, we have Jervis on the piano, thank you Jervis, all of our hymns are written by John Bell and Graham Maul, so we'll enjoy some John Bell hymns today. So we're going to sing, Jesus calls us here to meet him. <laughs>
We really do need some folk to learn how to use the photocopier. It's not difficult. It's a 1990s photocopier. Who was still in work in the 1990s? Oh, not many. <laughs> OK. Right, somebody going to come and help me? Glamorous assistant? An unglamorous assistant? So, um, one, whoever needed these. You put your hands up, you still haven't got one. Ursula, Ursula. Okay. There we go. Anybody else? Last, last call. Right. You, thank you very much. Thank you for my, being my glamorous assistant. If I'm allowed to say that these days. Okay. We move into into a call to prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Maker of the skies above, lowly Christ lover of the earth and its people, unfettered spirit, giver of gracious gifts, you are present among us. O hidden mystery, sun behind all suns, soul within all souls, in all we touch, in all we meet, you are present among us. As bearer of your image, we come to be reshaped, Dependent on your mercy, we ask to be made new. So we sing now, number 575, Before I Take the Body of My Lord. This is a beautiful, a beautiful little hymn. Um, and I must admit, that the line, I'm just, let me just find it in my hymn book a second. The line that gets me every time is that one, the little child in me. Where is it? He says, and then I'm thinking of a completely different hymn. I'm doing well today. <laughs> Let's sing 575. Interesting how, interesting how I was thinking of a different hymn there. But these are very, very powerful words, aren't they? 
the words of hope I often oh I think I think we need to get some buckets of water from can we get some glasses of water for those who are coughing very very powerful word the words of hope I often fail to give the prayers of kindness buried by my pride ooh ooh the narrowness of vision and of mind the need of other folk to serve my will how often have we done that very very uh, tough words there let's continue in our prayers for the right roads we avoided traveling and the kindly words we refused to share for the false gods who received our worship and the true selves we have starved of love by your grace God bless. for the hidden hurts we have held too tightly and the promises which we have never kept for the careless use of our time and money and the lame excuses we should never have made God by your grace forgive us for all we should be and all we can amend God in your love renew us for all you have in store for us and all you may demand of us God in your love prepare us for the life of the world and the love of its people God in your love commit us and we say together Kiri eleison, Christe eleison, Kiri eleison. Hear and believe these words of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Come and follow me. Glory to the Creator who gives us life. Glory to Jesus whose love remakes us. Glory to the Spirit, companion on our journey. Glory be to God. Amen. Now we come to our, we've just got one reading today. It's uh, quite a long and difficult reading. And as Roy is coming up, just a little introduction. It's another one of those readings that we put in the box. It's a hard reading. You could say it's of its time. Yet as we heard in the news yesterday, there was an assassination attempt on Donald Trump. There was 90 killed in Gaza as Israel targets a Hamas military chief. So maybe the reading is not of its time. Roy pointed out to me yesterday that there's a great bit of confusion in this reading as it is found in the NRSV and how their linguists have rendered the Greek. The direct translation of the Greek implies, listen to this, when his daughter Herodias came in and danced, when his daughter Herodias came in and danced. Now, that's what the translators who wrote the NRSV wrote down. But many Bible commentaries tell us that the name of Herodias' da his daughter is Salome. And they know this from a Jewish historian called Flavius Josephus let's hear it as Roy reads it okay slightly differently let's hear it as when his daughter with Herodias came in and danced that makes a little bit more sense to us maybe later you can ponder why did Mark write it this way but as you reflect on Roy's reading let's try and work out what this reading is trying to say to us in 2024. Thank you, Roy. I think it could be said that you need parental guidance to be here listening to this word as Phil has given the warning. Prior to the reading, which is about the death of John the Baptist, Jesus has sent his 12 disciples out and they've gone preaching and healing the people. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. 
Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said, <coughs> said to her mother, what shall I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Thank you, Roy. I'm sorry to give you such a difficult reading <laughs> this week. I was thinking back to, um, <clears throat> do you remember Mary Whitehouse? Remember Mary Whitehouse? And, no, not, not Sit, that was, that was, that's the one with the dog. Mary Whitehouse was the, was the one who was trying to get um, clean up TV, wasn't she? And there was one great interview with her at one point uh, when uh, one of the sort of people caught her out and she was trying to say this and this and this shouldn't be on the television. And she, she was asked, well, what do you want people to do then? And she said, well, then they should read the Bible because it's clean and wholesome. I think this would make quite a good plot for uh, uh, EastEnders or Home and Away or, 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 or something like that, wouldn't it? Not an easy reading. And I would love to just ignore it. Shall I ignore it? <laughs> you know I always like to have a go at some difficult readings. But first, uh, I want to tell you a bit about Iona and why we're using a different uh, communion liturgy and we'll, we'll come back round to Her Herod, Herodias and um, John the Baptist in a moment. Now, somebody asked me yesterday to explain uh, the muddle we get ourselves into uh, when we're trying to create the preaching plan. And, and, and where, where we get to, I mean we've got, if you think about it, we've got some wonderful local preachers We've got some wonderful um, preachers. We've got some, some wonderful um, supernumerary ministers. 
Um, and as we, look to, as we get the plan dates in, inevitably, you look at one particular Sunday, and everybody's available. Everybody's available on that Sunday, so that's an easy Sunday to create the plan. And then you look at another Sunday, and there's nobody available, and it gets a bit more difficult. So we were trying to do the plan, we were, we were working on version one of the plan, and St. John's ended up with communion on the last Sunday of the last plan, the last Sunday of June, and the first Sunday of July. And guess what? There was a bit of deep drawing of breath. Uh, but it was the only Sunday I could give you communion in July. And then we had a bit of a re reshuffle uh, when Angie uh, was requested uh, could, could she go to Bromyard this morning? So Angie's in Bromyard, and you've had me two weeks in a row. So we could move communion. But when we were talking about having communion on the last Sunday of June and the first Sunday of July, what we thought we'd do is we'd use a completely different liturgy today. And I suggested using one from Iona. Iona, if uh, folk have been there, is a beautiful island off uh, Oban on the west coast of Scotland. And uh, since St. Columba visited in 563, it's been considered as a holy place, a thin place. And I've never managed to tell you about my sabbatical, have I? No. I've told Bromyard about it. I've told the Women's Fellowship at um, Ledbury all about it, but I've never told you anything about it. So during my sabbatical in 2021, I went to see some ho pilgrimages to holy places and holy islands. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about my sabbatical before we go back to Herod. So my first holy island was... Which one is it? St. Michael's Mount uh, in Cornwall, named after a local le legend of Archangel Michael, who appeared to fishermen in 495, standing high on a rocky island. It's a place with... Um, a place. Thank you, Tony. It's a place. <laughs> Tony's got some cues. It's a place with a long history, a monastic history, and a place of pilgrimage. There's even a plaque by those, by those stones there to tell you um, Queen Elizabeth stood on this spot. It's a place of Christian worship for over a millennium. And then there's Iona, an Iona Abbey. It's a long journey there, and a journey that inevitably slows you down. First you have a fast train to Glasgow, then a slower train to Oban, a ferry to Mull, a bus trip over Mull, a ferry from Fianfort over to Iona, and then finally you walk, the slowest mode of transport ever, you walk to the Abbey. The abbey had fallen into disuse until one George MacLeod, a Church of Scotland minister, came up with the idea of rebuilding it. He'd started in an ex with an experiment in the 1930s with Fingleton Mill. He'd he was working with local artisan craftsmen and theological students. And he was worried that students coming out of theological college could not easily associate with the working class people in Govan. So he decided he'd get the theological students working with working class folk. So off they went on weekends and in the summer to work on rebuilding the mill. It was a great success. And once the mill was finished, they set off on their next project, Iona Abbey, which George knew from his family holidays on Iona as a child. George knew the spirituality of the place. He described it as a thin place. And if you watch, whenever a thin place is mentioned, when you have someone who's doing uh, sign language for the deaf, they do this thing like this. A thin place. And I think that's quite beautiful to remind us that there isn't much between us, there isn't much 
that separates us from God. This is what George MacLeod said, a thin place where only tissue paper separates the material from the spiritual. When I've been there, there is almost a tangible closeness to God. I, you can't, I can't describe it. That's the only words I can use. A tangible closeness to God. And from the community that, of people that rebuilt the Abbey came the Iona community, now a dispersed worldwide wide community with bases at Iona and Glasgow. And following George's founding, they have a grounding in Scripture. They have a solid liturgical sense. Um, George MacLeod was so interested in liturgy and so interested in Celtic language and Celtic grounding uh, to the earth and to nature. Our a community now is a, set, a movement for good and it works in peace and justice. So Caroline and I went to stay in the Abbey for a week in 2021. And it was a wonderful opportunity to feel close to God, learn of the history and today's work of the Iona community. It was wonderful to spend some time reflecting on the surroundings of the Abbey. Each of those little porticos in the left-hand photo have carvings inspired by worship and Bible stories. And on the right you can see two that remind us, show us of the importance of bread and wine in the life of the church. And we were there for Harvest 2021. And seeing the lady there with her mask on reminds me we were just coming out of COVID. But the daily patterns of worship there were really helpful, as well as learning some new songs and sharing in the beautiful liturgies. Now, for those of you who've fallen asleep in my holiday slides, there's only three left. On our day of pilgrimage around the island in the rain, we saw the beach. This is the beach on which Columba, St. Columba, set sail back to Ireland at one point to found a monastery in Durrow. And we were encouraged on the beach to take a stone and build a cairn to reflect on our spiritual journey and the journey of Columba. And as I reflect back on my journey and my continuing journey, the Iona community, its songs, its message of justice and peace and its liturgies, have moved me profoundly, and that's why I wanted to share them with you today. One last slide from Iona, and I'm sorry that it's out of focus. Uh, the boat was moving very fast, it was raining, and this is the best uh, photo I could take at the time. We travelled uh, to Staffa to see Fingal's Cave, and we had this holy encounter with dolphins, and it was a wonderful sight to see. So moving from the Iona community, moving from thinking about their sense of justice and peace, what do we make of our reading today on the death of John the Baptist? Here are some suggestions on the screen and some thoughts on where we can go with it. So we think about the consequences of unchecked power and immorality. So we're talking about Herod Antipas, okay? This is not Herod the Great from our Christmas nativities. Herod Antipas uh, followed him, and he was the ruler and tetrarch of Galilee and Perea. He'd married Herodias, who was his niece. All right, just think about that. After he'd had her divorced from his half-brother, Herod Philip I. John the Baptist was trying to speak truth to power, and he'd condemned the marriage. It was against the Levitical law of the time, and it was perceived as a blatant disregard for the sanctity of marriage, which at that point was central to Jewish ethical and religious life. And all of this, of course, when you think in a, in a broader sort of uh, uh, thing about his call, his call to repentance, and his call for moral and spiritual renewal. By publicly denouncing the marriage, John was upholding his role as a moral 
and religious authority. And we think, if we think back to then, okay, and compare it to today, Herod Antipas had complete power, complete power over his tetrarchy, had no moral integrity in leadership, and his action in desiring to please others was a complete and utter misuse of power. So let's reflect a moment. Where are we seeing power being misused around our world now? Reflect how in a number of places there is no moral integrity in leadership. Think about Russia and Ukraine where Putin has complete power. Think of Gaza and Israel. Think of Trump and Stormy Daniels. I'm going to mention Trump again. Think of Trump and the storming of the Capitol building. Think of Partygate. Think of Iraq and weapons of mass destruction. In the news this week, Orgreave. Think of Orgreave. Going back in history, think of the Newport Rising and the hanging of Dick Penderin. You know, I, I could go on and on and on about examples of where power is misused around the world. So let us pray for checks and balances for leadership. And let's pray for integrity of leadership. The second one, the cost of speaking truth to power. John the Baptist was very brave in speaking truth to power. And he lost his life over his actions. Let's reflect on those in our recent times who have lost their lives speaking truth to power. I'll name a few. I'm sure you can think of many more. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Martin Luther King, many, many others. So Lord, make us brave when we need to speak truth to power and help us to, in, to challenge the injustices we see. Manipulation and its consequences? Well, Herodias' manipulation of her daughter to achieve her own vengeful go goals shows that there can be a destructive nature of using other people for personal gain. So, Lord, help us to ensure we have positive, genuine relationships with others and we are not tempted to use our power or our relationships with others to deceive or to manipulate. The perils of rash promises. Herod's impulsive promise to grant Salome anything she desired without considering the consequences results in this tragic outcome. Lord, help us to be thoughtful in our decision-making and remind us of the potential harm of making hasty judgments or commitments. And finally, courage and integrity. John the Baptist's unwavering commitment to his message, despite the personal cost, serves as an example of courage and integrity. Lord, help us to remain steadfast in our values and our beliefs, regardless of external pressures. So let us learn from this difficult story the importance of moral integrity, the risks and rewards of speaking truth to power, the dangers of manipulation and rash decisions, and the enduring value of courage and integrity. And let us remember from the Iona community the call of our Lord to be peacemakers, to love all, to love all, even our enemies. And let's continue to do all we can to work with God in building God's kingdom. Amen. So let's sing number 139. I think this might be a new one to us, but Jervis has been playing it for us through.
beautiful. So if you're following, following on the sheet, uh, we're back to page 27. The page numbers are on the top of the sheet. And we come to an affirmation of faith, which we're all going to say together. Let's take a breath a moment. We believe in God of others, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree, a man of compassion, he died forsaken, he descended into the earth, to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb, he ascended into heaven, to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, Spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and eternal life. Amen. And we come to our prayers of concern. Our, our response to when I say, God in your mercy, is hear our prayer. Let us pray. Maker and lover of all, in the mystery of your kindness, you have bound us to each other and called us to serve the earth and its people. So hear us. As will be heard in the ancient place of Iona this morning and in our place of worship, we pray for all the churches, all churches, that they may ever be centers of faith, hospitality and imagination modelling the future rather than lamenting the past. Now we spend a moment to reflect. We're in July, a time of movement for Methodist ministers. We pray for us as Angie prepares to move away from us and for many other churches whose ministers are on the move. We pray for Lazelles, where Angie is going. And we pray for the many other Methodist churches around the land who will be getting new ministers in September. But with sadness, we also remember those many churches and circuits who've asked for a minister but will not be receiving one. And we pray for strength and discernment and grace for them as they work out how to work without the full complement of ministers they needed. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grateful for the life of our bodies, we pray for those whose lives are diminished by ill health, depression, grief or rejection, asking for the healing the affirming, the listening, which will encourage and restore them. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Conscious of the peace of this place, we pray for those who have no peace because of war or the fear of war or the threat of violence or the grip of hunger, or the loss of hope. May the voice of the victims be heard and the work of the peacemakers be blessed. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we think of Iona, surrounded by rugged and tender beauty, we pray for the earth, especially where it is da damaged by human carelessness and threatened by human greed, and ask that we may learn to care for the earth as you do. 
God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And because we are here to meet with Jesus, we join our words to those he taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we continue in our worship. Uh, as we consider our offering, we'll bring forward the offering at the... We'll bring forward the offering now, and we, as we prepare to sing our next hymn. Good and gracious God, we ask for your blessing on this, our offering, and all the other offerings we've given through the bank, through our lives. Bless this money, bless our lives. Use us, Lord, to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. And we sing our communion song, which is number 580, Come, Lord, Be Our Guest. <laughs> Please be seated. So if you're uh, following in the, in the printed version, we're on page 47. We are here because God has, Jesus has called us. We are here strangers and friends, locals and visitors, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious. It is always a mixed company that Jesus gathers and invites to his table where in bread and wine he meets us 
and through him we are we who are different are joined to each other so come not because you understand but because you are understood come not because of how you feel but because God has food for you come not because you deserve a place but because Jesus invites you just as you are this sacrament began on the night of Jesus's arrest when he and his disciples gathered around a table during their meal Jesus took bread and when he had blessed it he broke it and said this is my body it is given for you do this in remember do this to remember me later he took a cup of wine and when he had blessed it he said this cup is a new relationship with God made possible because of my death drink it all of you to remember me I shall not share this with you again until I do so in God's coming kingdom so now we do as Jesus did and commanded us to do we take this bread and this wine the ordinary things of the world which Christ in his own way will make special and as he said a prayer before sharing we do so too the Lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to God our maker it is right to give God thanks Praise is, you, is yours, holy God. Praise beyond all telling. All that we are, all that we have, all that we know, and all that is yet to be comes from your care. Water and wisdom, light and longing, the stones in the earth and the hope in our hearts are grounded in your graciousness. The life of the world and all its people, nature and human skill, celebrate you as first mover and final destiny therefore to the unending song of earth sea and sky we join our praise to the anthems of the company of heaven the angels and archangels the saints of every age we join our praise and as one with your people on earth north and south east and west we join our praise singing the song of your eternal greatness holy. holy we say holy 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 god of heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is the one who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest because you gracious god have been faithful to us we will be faithful to Jesus. He promised to be with those who met in his name. This we believed. He promised to hear the prayers of faithful people. This we believed. He said that in the communion of bread and wine, he would be present to us as we remembered him. This we celebrate. So send now your Holy Spirit among us and upon this bread and wine that we may taste and see your goodness, be embraced by your love, and be engaged in your service. Amen. As Jesus did, so we do. We break this bread. We share this wine. We believe that he who lived, died and rose again for us, and will meet us here. Graciously nourish us, O Christ, so that we who try to follow you may receive food for the journey and be bound in solidarity with all who walk in your way. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Give us your peace. Take this bread. Share this wine.
who's coming to share with me. In these, Christ comes to us with love from God, the gifts of God.
And we come to our final hymn now, which is number 598. Shout for joy. And our blessing. May the everlasting God shield you wherever you go, and the blessing of God be upon you, the blessing of the giver of life. The blessing of God be upon you, the blessing of Christ, the Christ of love. The blessing of God be upon you, the blessing of the Spirit of peace. The blessing of the Trinity be upon you, now and evermore. Amen.